Hey guys, what's up? We're going to be looking at how to make our effects in Ableton Live Lite. Before we get into that, let's listen to the quote-unquote drop that I added. It's nothing crazy, but it uses the same techniques as we see in our instrument rack. Only difference is I did not create a group for it, which I can do right now. And we'll rename that drop. Now, I've got three instruments in my drop channel. I'm not going to go over how to set that up because we did that in the instrument rack video. But I'll let you hear what it sounds like by itself. That's using some presets that I made uh, from scratch and with the drums thrown in there. Super basic and super simple, but it gives you a good idea of just how powerful using instrument racks is and how you can turn one audio channel into three. So let's go ahead and apply the drum rack to our effects rack, and we'll start filling out some of the space. Sorry about that. This airplane mode, and we're moving forward. All right, effects rack. And we're going to also actually delete this intro and we're going to create an audio channel above the effects rack. And that is because we're going to be doing some uh, slicing and chopping up of audio to get it to fit with the grid to make our drum rack stuff easier. And it's nice to have it right above and we don't need that box intro channel right now. So we've got our drum rack and I like to work within the C3 range because it's like in the middle of the MIDI keyboard on the piano roll. So let's listen to the intro right quick and see what we can do. Okay, so it's pretty empty. Let's go ahead and go to our sample pack. I'm gonna just keep working out of the virtual Reddit heavy bass design that you can get on Splice because everything there is high quality. And let's see, what do I want? I kind of like the cinematic one, so we'll drag that to our audio channel. Now you can see that it has a bit of a lead in, and I don't necessarily want that. Sorry for blasting your ears. There we go. So I'm just going to delete that tail and consolidate using Command J. So it starts right at the very beginning of the actual impact. I'm going to drag that onto C3. And Make sure that our effects is grouped first off. And then we'll set our effects channel to minus 12. So now when I trigger it, so at the very beginning, we'll create a small MIDI clip and we'll just, there we go. So now you can already see how that effect just fills out the space and makes the beginning so much more meaningful. All right, there's a transition there, so we can add another one. Um, let's see. We'll use a riser or like a white noise. Use this one and let's see. Uh, it's two bars, or that's a whole bar. So we'll put that on C sharp three. And this is where having the audio clip above works out nicely because you can see when it needs to start so that it triggers the entire sample in time. See? So from here, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just find samples you want to use for your effects, all your impacts and whatnot, like leading out of that riser. I might want something a little more low-key for 
the impact. So I can drag impact hall. And let's listen to our intro now with those three things added. Okay, so now everything drops out. There's a couple things we can do here. We can add a couple risers layered on top of each other so that there's some noise filling out that space. And then I'll show you something you can do with your intro to maybe make it a little more interesting. Let's start with the effects chain. So let's go ahead and place these on E3, F3, and F sharp 3. We're gonna find a couple risers that Let's see, uh, that's one, that's two, that's a two bar, let's find one more four bar. Okay. So, where is it? We got the four bar noisy, which means we can trigger it at the very beginning, but we're going to want to consolidate it first so that it only lasts for three bars. And then we can replace. And let's see if that worked. Perfect. So that's what having the audio channel above is extremely helpful for. It helps you stay organized and know exactly how long these effects are going to last. Which one was the two bar? Two bar siren, so that should come in there and then four bar we will consolidate that and replace it. And then right there. Now we should have some stuff filling out our build. Cool. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and look at our intro. We'll go ahead and copy it over and we'll look at just the first chord. Now we're not going to need this melody right now. We're just going to need the chord progression, which is F minor. And we'll make that three bars long. And stretch it out so that it fills the entire MIDI clip, if I can grab it. There we go. Now if you go to your chords and hit, click configure, You can map your pitch bend and check out what you can do with it. We'll go not super dramatic. So our chords start doing this downward motion while our effects are going to do this upward motion. I think it's going to give it a nice contrast. And we can do the exact same thing with our bass. We'll give it a two octave range. And then to make sure that the pitch is bending at the same time, we can go over to our chords, copy the automation, and paste it. So now our bass should be following the same uh, rate of decay. I kind of like leaving the arp where it is because it creates this dissonance between the chords and the arp. And then we can add our lead back in in this upper octave.
And I want that one to move upwards so we can configure the pitch pin, same as the chords. Only difference is this time we're going to be going up, which I think is going to be really cool. Go about halfway. Now let's add that in with our effects and see what we got. Alright, so it's kind of wonky and that's pretty great in my opinion. You can obviously make everything move in the same direction at the same rate if you really want to. Uh, like we'll just copy that onto our lead and see how it all sounds with everything moving. Create automation for our ARP. And boom. I kind of like that better actually. But hopefully this gives you some ideas as to what you can do with your effects channels and hopefully I explained this in enough detail you can go crazy with the effects and I think that's pretty clear seeing as we have like 128 drum sample regions in the drum rack I don't think you're gonna use 128 samples if you do you're a madman but yeah, this is how I would uh, set up my effects channel in Live Light because you can use the audio clip above to see how long the sample is going to be and then trigger it on the beat you want it to start. Let's listen to everything in conjunction with each other one more time. Alright, so thanks for watching. Next time we will be going over how you can use Ozone 8 from Splice's Rent to Own program to mix down and master your track. And it'll be a very brief mixing mastering guide. I am not like the final say in how you should mix or master. There's tons of information out there. I'm just showing how you can route your plugins in Ableton Live Lite and how you can make sure each individual sound creates its own space. So be looking out for that. But until next time, I will catch you all. Let's get lit tonight. Can you feel the vibe?